Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Wednesday, October 17th, 2018. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. This week, the flamboyant nursing home is joining the observance of International Day of Older Persons with a celebration of its residents dubbed Flamboyant Week. The activities began on Monday, October 15th with a special Thanksgiving service, which was chaired by Donna Hanley, nurse manager at the flamboyant nursing home. In attendance were Minister of Social Development Development, the Honorable Eric Evelyn, senior staff at the Alexandra Hospital, as well as family members of the residents. Hospital Administrator Gary Pemberton made the welcome remarks, noting the theme for International Day of Older Persons, celebrating older human rights champions. I also want to use this opportunity as well to, to commend the staff here at the Flamboyant Nursing Home for the excellent care that they have been providing for the seniors because it is not easy at times taking care of our, of our seniors because the family members, I'm sure, can attest to that and it is something a challenge and our workers here at the Flamboy and Nursing Home, they have stuck to the task to ensure that we continue to provide that level of service to our, our seniors because we always want to recognize and take care of, of, of our senior members at all times because they, as I said before, they would have laid the foundation for all of us. As we celebrate with the seniors, I want, want to encourage one and all to, to participate in the activities that will be coming up and ensure that we continue to ensure that our seniors feel appreciated for the work that we would have done over the years. The service also included scripture readings, the rendition of songs and poems, and a skit by the nursing home's residents and staff, prayers, and the spoken word by Pastor Ron Daniel, as well as special remarks by permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health, Nicole slack Liburd, who spoke on behalf of Junior Minister of Health, Hazel Brandy Williams. In the flamboyant nursing home, we can boast of a 38-bed state-of-the-art facility that provides quality nursing and rehabilitation services, not just in the Federation and in the region, but competitive on the global stage as well. In accordance with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, we also recognize the importance of the participation of older persons in cultural life. At the Flamboyant Nursing Home, residents participate in the production of craft items and are also exposed to traditional music presentations such as that of the steel pan. The Nevis Island Administration is committed to ensuring that no one is left behind and as such vibrant traditional musical entertainment is not limited to those who can participate at the community level but also those in our residential facilities as well. As we continue to celebrate activities for the rest of the week and month, I encourage you to celebrate with our seniors, not just at the Flamboyant Nursing Home, but those in the community. The activities for Flamboyant Week continued today with a cultural presentation for the residents and a lecture for the staff. On Thursday, October 18th, the residents will be taken on a picnic at Pinnis, and on Friday, October 19th, the Flamboyant Nursing Home will host a fashion show. Meantime, Flamboyant Week continued Tuesday, October 16th with a celebration of centenarians. The Department of Social Services Senior Citizens Division hosted the ceremony at the Flamboyant Nursing Home as part of the month of activities for Seniors Month. The ceremony honored four centenarians in the persons of 106-year-old Cillian Powell, 101-year-old Artemisia Etty Jeffers, 101-year-old Eileen Smithen and 101-year-old Mary Brown. Minister of Social Development is the Honorable Eric Evelyn. I must say that our four centenarians are role models in our society. As Miss Wigley truly said, they are our heroes. Because reaching to the age of 100 is no easy and mean feat and we know what it was like in those days when they were growing up and to be able to reach this milestone and still batting and batting well it says much about our centenarians and so as we celebrate our centenarians we must celebrate them because of the fact 
that they would have blazed the trail for us. They would have tried to inculcate in us the values. The values of going to church. The values of hard work. The values of eating properly. The value of love. The value of being a great family person and extending that family love to one another. Minister Evelyn also commended the family members of the centenarians. Family members who have been making that journey with them, who have been so committed to them, and who have been assisting them on this journey all the way. They could not have done it alone. And of course, as we celebrate Mrs. Cillian Martin Powell, we must celebrate that close-knit Powell family, and especially Carlisle, because I, I visit the hospital almost on a weekly basis, and many times when I come, I see Carlisle's vehicle. And as we celebrate Mrs. Jeffers, we must celebrate Officer Ali, because when I come to the hospital, I see him here often as well, a young man and very committed to his grandmother. And as we celebrate Mrs. Eileen Smithon, we have to celebrate Pastor Kelly and his family. And the family there at the Zion Chapel, including Joseph Flybert and all the others and the other folks at Zion, because they have been doing a marvelous job in taking care of Sister Eileen as well. And as we celebrate Mrs. Mary Brown, we have to also celebrate her son Richard and his dedicated wife Denise have been doing a marvelous job in taking care of Mrs. Brown as well. The management and the staff of the flamboyant nursing home were also commended for their excellent care of the seniors over the years. Also present at the ceremony were Deputy Governor General, Her Honor Hailita Leibard, Junior Minister, the Honorable Hazel Brandy Williams, representatives from the Ministry of Social Development on St. Kitts, as well as family family members and friends of the centenarians. Meantime, the Department of Social Services Senior Citizens Division will host a new activity in celebration of International Month of Older Persons in the form of a family fund day tomorrow, Thursday, October 18th. Jamaica Morton of the Senior Citizens Division told us about the fund day. This activity entails games like lime and spoon, you have the dress up races, um, tread the roll, penny concert. The penny concert is a concert where someone goes up on the stage, you pay them a dollar to go up on the stage to do anything that you want them to do. And if you want them to come down, you pay them to go down. But if you want them to continue, you pay them to continue. Um, we're gonna have games like name that song where someone would be playing the instrumental, I guess, and then you'll have to guess what the name of that song is. This is open to the public. This is open to everyone. We want it to be a day of fun. We're gonna have the family of the seniors participating on that day. They're gonna be playing like dominoes with the seniors. Um, cards. We're also going to have a game where each senior or uh, most seniors would bring a picture of themselves from back in the day and you'll have to guess which senior it is. This activity would be free to the public but we'll also have a game of the Lucky Dip which is $2. This would be for everyone, both male, female, old and young. We are inviting the public to come on out to this activity. The Senior Citizens Division's Family Fun Day will begin at 10 a.m. tomorrow, Thursday, October 18th at the El Camino T. Willett Park. Still to come. If you have leftovers, freeze them for later or use them as an ingredient in another meal. The details after this break. Welcome back. As we seek to achieve the sustainable development goal of zero hunger by 2030, the Ministry of Agriculture continues to urge farmers to get involved in protected agriculture, which guarantees the production of more food using fewer resources. Minister of Agriculture, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, made the appeal as part of his address to mark the observance of World Food Day on Tuesday, October 16th. The Food and Agriculture Organization suggests that the growing world population is expected to reach 9 billion by the year 2050. 
As such, farmers should find new and more productive ways to farm food and diversify their crops. Using an integrated farming approach will not only help farmers increase their crops yield and consequently their profits, but can also improve the quality of their farmland. In Nevis, we are well ahead of this recommendation and are now focusing on intensive farming for meat production. This type of farming not only produces more meat, but it allows for a better quality. The general public also has to buy into this effort so as to ensure that we can all have nutritious meals on a daily basis, the Agriculture Minister also noted. We realize that life is fast-paced, and as such, finding time to prepare nutritious meals can be a challenge if one does not know how. But nutritious meals do not have to be elaborate. In reality, they can be cooked in a quick and easy way using only a few ingredients. Therefore, we are all encouraged to share our quick nutritious recipes with our families, friends, colleagues, and even online. You may also want to follow chefs and bloggers online to learn new recipes or talk to your local farmer to see how they cook their produce at home. Noting that the theme for World Food Day was Our Actions Are Our Future, Minister Jeffers urged residents not to waste food. If you have leftovers, freeze them for later or use them as an ingredient in another meal. When you eat at a restaurant, ask for half a portion if you're not feeling too hungry or take your leftovers home. Sharing is an important aspect of achieving the zero hunger goal. There are persons who are less fortunate than we are, and when we have excess, we should adopt a more brotherly and sisterly approach to living and providing for others rather than discarding or dumping. As we observe the activities this week, I remind you of the theme, our actions, or future. The Ministry of Agriculture also partners with and supports activities in the Ministries of Health and Education, recognizing that these sectors are critical to the broad-based success of food and nutrition security. Minister Jeffers said the Ministry of Agriculture takes its goal of food and nutrition security very seriously, and this is also reflected in its investments in the sector, as well as its engagement with allied agencies such as the Republic of China, Taiwan, FAO, Cardi, and AICA. And when we counted up the years, we realized that Mrs. Lescott would have been the longest serving principal because she would have served in that position for. 15 years. The Joyce and Lyman Primary School has made a presentation to former principal of the school, Marion Lescott, recognizing her long service at the institution. The presentation was won in a series of activities the school is hosting as it celebrates its 40th anniversary. The presentation of a plaque and gifts were made by teachers at JLPS who were impacted by Lescott when they were students of the school. Mrs. Lescott was one of those teachers who was here when the school was opened in 1978. So 40 years ago when the school was opened, Mrs. Lescott was one of those teachers who started working right here. And then she became the principal in 1997. And she continued in that role until 2012. Marion Lescott is currently the supervisor of the meals program at the Joyson Liburd Primary School. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. Thank you for viewing.